Well, you gotta ask yourself one question. Am I the AI voice? Or am I a real human voice? Well, do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Have you ever found yourself in a very dangerous or potentially deadly situation suddenly solved by a friend or a total stranger with apparently no effort? Story 1. When I was in high school, I worked at the local video store. It was a small town and everyone knew one another. Anyway, these two thuggish black dudes who were the main C-dope dealers for the hood would come into the store once a month and intimidate me into getting rid of their late fees because they never brought anything back on time. My boss finally caught on and told me that I couldn't do that anymore, no matter how scary they were. So they show up a few weeks later expecting me to waive their fees. I explained to them that I could potentially get fired, but I would do it for them one last time. They actually understood and were appreciative. As they were walking out, they gave me their pager number and said if I ever needed anything to call them. I assumed they meant I could call them for herb, sea substance, or whatever else they dabbled in, so I just kind of ignored it and went about my life. Flash forward a few months, and I'm hooking up with this girl who had just broken up with her super redneck boyfriend. Mr. Redneck was not pleased when he found out about the situation. He showed up at the video store one night with some of his moron friends and informed me that they would be waiting for me in the parking lot and were going to beat the hell out of me after I closed the store for the evening. I still had several hours before close, and as time went by, several more truckloads of rednecks show up. I was really starting to sweat. There were 15 to 20 dudes just waiting to teach me a lesson. It seemed there was no way to get out of this beating. Out of sheer desperation, I paged the scary substance dealer guys. They called me back pretty quickly. I explained what was going on and asked if they could help me out. They told me not to worry. They would be there shortly. I didn't know what to expect. I continued my closing duties while I waited for them to show up. Once I turned the lights off to the store, the mob in the parking lot started getting riled up. They were yelling and taunting me through the windows. I had run out of things to do in the store, and the dudes I had paged still hadn't shown up. As I was setting the alarm and mentally preparing for a demoralizing butt-beating, a procession of hippies pulled into the parking lot and circled the trucks. I watched from the window as the dealers and their friends all pulled out guns and told the rednecks in no uncertain terms that I was not to be messed with. To this day, I have never seen people scramble so fast. There were literally tire marks in the parking lot from all the trucks peeling out to get away. This one event led to me never being messed with by anyone in my hometown ever again. It was pretty nice. I could talk all the smack I wanted to with impunity since everyone was so scared of those guys. Good times. Too long didn't read. Multiple rednecks wanted to beat my butt over a girl and scary dope dealers saved me. You ever watch the movie Dogma? This reminds me of the scene outside the family care clinic where the woman was about to get smacked down by three kids with hockey sticks when Jay and Silent Bob swoop in. But seriously, it was really cool of these two guys to be able to do this. If I was in a situation like this and these two did something like that for me, I'd waive all their fees from then on. I don't care. I'll tell the boss, hey, these people saved my life. What have you done besides pay me? Story 2. This happened, but my friend was the one in danger, and I was the one who intervened to potentially save him. A few years ago, I was working in the mountainous forests of northeastern British Columbia. We used to see wildlife all the time while working, while driving, everywhere. Well, one day, we came across an unalive moose carcass sitting off to the side of the bush road. We took a look and made a point to remember where it was so that on the way out, we could see if any scavenging animals would be hanging around the carcass. We went in and did our work, and on the way back out, we could see a huge black bear dragging the full-grown moose carcass across the road. So my friend, who was in the passenger seat, starts trying to take pictures through the windshield. So there I sit, patiently watching the bear who eventually lets go of the moose and slinks back into the bush near my side of the truck. That's when I hear a door close. I look ahead, and my friend is walking out of the truck and up the road with his camera, taking pictures into the bushes. I yell out the window, Hey, get back in the frickin' truck, dude! But he keeps walking away. Eventually, he's pretty far up the road, so I get out of the truck and walk a few feet away to him, 
and start yelling at him to come back. Well, he starts coming back, but walks around, away from where the bear went into the bush and heads back to the car. I grab his arm and say, stay over that way. This is where things went wrong. I turn my head back around to see the bear's massive head peeking out of the bush. I remembered my bear training and started saying, whoa bear, whoa bear, to let him know I'm there so as not to scare him. This is where things go wrong. He then charges at me from about 50 feet. I stick my hands up in the air, stand my ground, and scream, Freak off! Freak off, bear! Freak off! But he just keeps coming a mile a minute. Again, once the bear is about 20 feet from me, running full tilt, I scream, Get the freak away from me, bear! Get the freak away! at the top of my lungs, still standing ground with my knees shaking out of sheer terror. Finally, about five feet away, the massive bear stops. He snorts and walks back into the bush. I've never been so scared in my life. Too long didn't read? Saved my friend from a bear. That is a brave man. You've probably heard the old joke that says, If we two are chased by a bear, I don't have to outrun the bear. I have to outrun you. Sadly, there's some truth to that statement. I'm glad this guy decided to stand up and save his friend. I honestly don't know if I could have that presence of mind if I were in that situation. Good for him. Story 3. I had recently moved to the Columbia Heights neighborhood in Northwest D.C. a few years ago. And for those who don't know, Columbia Heights was really bad about 10 years ago, but is in the process of gentrifying. The neighborhood is pretty culturally and racially diverse, and I could afford it. One day I was walking home from work and was about two blocks from my house, but slightly off the beaten path on a most empty street. I had my earbuds, which isn't always the safest thing to do, just because you can lose situational awareness. I also had a laptop bag with no laptop, which again isn't all that smart. Anyway, a dude is walking towards me on the sidewalk and is around my age. We make eye contact, and he says something unintelligible to me, and I say something like, Sorry, assuming I was either in his way or he was begging. I notice he has bloodshot eyes, and if I had to guess... He was probably a dopehead. I angle my body towards him as we pass each other, and the next thing I know, he's grabbing for my earbuds. He pulls them out of my ears, but doesn't quite get them as I jump back. I'm sort of in shock, but I've been in fights before, but not when I had no build-up to the moment. I think I yelled something like, What the hell? And as he was coming at me again, I was thinking I probably could take the guy, but should try to avoid blood, hitting his teeth with my fist. I don't know why my first thought here was the risk of hepatitis rather than maybe I should run my butt away, which would have been smarter. But as he comes at me again, suddenly some unseen man is in front of me and pushes the dude away. Dopehead then stands his ground and dang if the man doesn't push him again and then starts yelling at him to get the frick out of the neighborhood and berating him over and over. Dopehead turns toward the main street and begins to move quickly away. The man is yelling loudly at him the whole time, echoing off the nearby houses. I'm kind of just staring at this point as adrenaline is coursing through me. At that moment, suddenly a little girl, maybe three, four years old, on a tricycle rides past me in the same direction as the man and the dopehead, opposite direction I was heading. She's just following her daddy, the man who saved me, like it's the most normal thing in the world. Most surreal thing I'd ever experienced. I just sort of watch as the three of them head back to the main street. I never got a chance to say thanks. Too long didn't read? Dopehead randomly assaults me. A man comes out of nowhere to save my butt and swears like a sailor at the perpetrator while his little daughter rides her tricycle a few feet behind. Yeah, I gotta admit, that's kind of surreal. I wouldn't call it entirely unexpected. If that was really his daughter, then he's protecting his family. He's got some skin in the game. I'm glad this person got some situational awareness and figured out what he could do to sort of mitigate this happening again. If the laptop bag didn't have a laptop in it, maybe it could have just distracted the guy with that. I mean, it didn't have anything of value in it anyway, right? Story 4. This was in Karachi, Pakistan in the late 90s. We were at my uncle's place who was renovating his house. He had a small cement mixer set up behind the house which was taking up some of the alley. Usually, when someone is building a house, the cops will show up and say the mixer is illegal and ask for a bribe to turn a blind eye. Problem is, on this particular day, pretty much all the cops started showing up one by one. Each one would say, 
Pay us and no one else will bother you. And a few minutes later, a new police van would show up saying the same thing. We had enough and stopped paying for them. This ticked off one of the cop vans and a couple of officers showed up at our door. We kids opened it up and the officer asked us to come with them. He took us to the end of the alley where five or six cops were standing, AK-47s drawn. We all dumped bricks while the officer kept saying, Why won't your parents pay? Why won't your parents pay? Things were not looking good. Luckily, one of our neighbors saw the cops rounding up the kids and walking us away. He was a big shot in a major gang. He left his house, got on his motorbike, and drove over to where we were standing. Told the cop, let them go if you know what's good for you. The cops left. No one bothered us again until the construction was done. Another Karachi story in the same vein. Every now and then there's a general strike in Karachi which is enforced by local gangs. By enforced, that means they'll gun down anybody who leaves their houses. It's not always that bad, but this is the threat. During one of these strikes, my uncle's aunt, not the same uncle as the last story, feels sick and had to be taken to the hospital, which was right around the corner from my uncle's place. You could walk to it. My uncle was at the hospital all day long looking after her and decided to head home in the afternoon. Streets were deserted, and he made haste. When he was literally 20 meters from his home, a gang of bikers saw him, chased, and cornered him. They asked him why he was out during the strike, and he tried explaining. They'd have none of it. They had their weapons leveled at him while he backed up against the gate to his neighbor's home. He banged at their metal gate for help, but who the heck would come out in that situation? Luckily, a car drove by, black with tinted windows. A window rolls down and says, Let this one go. Bikers left. Uncle sprinted for his house, got in, and started shaking uncontrollably. And that is how we found him. And he told us this story. Story 5 was riding my bike home from 7th grade, I was about 13, in the middle of a 100-plus degree heat in Arizona. My usual riding friend was home sick that day, so I was by myself. Two high school kids ride past me, stop, and turn around after me. They started yelling, Hey, kid! Me, being the obedient new teenager, I stopped. Bullies. You know my kid brother Steve? Me. No, I don't know Steve. Bullies. Hogwash! My kid brother goes to school with you, and he told me you tried to beat him up today. Me. I don't know who Steve is. Honestly, I never met anyone named Steve. Bullies. After getting off of their bikes, they started pushing me. I know you guys. You scared the hell out of him. Now I'm gonna freaking beat your butt. Me. Being the wuss I was at that age and started crying, I have no idea who Steve is. Please leave me alone. I just want to go home. Bullies. Pushing some more, almost knocked me off my bike. You're dead! All of a sudden, a balding older man driving a great Cadillac pulls up right next to us. He rolls down his window and starts screaming at the bullies. Stranger. You boys, you get away from him! Leave him alone! If you don't get out of here, I'm going to call the cops! Bullies. What? Stranger. I mean it! You boys, leave him alone! I'm calling the cops on you! At this point, he opened his passenger door by leaning over. Stranger, kid, get in. I'll drive you home. Looking back at the high schoolers, you boys leave or I'll wait here until the cops arrive. The bullies thankfully left because I was a blubbering baby crying heavily. Stranger, get in, kid. I'll take you home. Not sure why, but my gut told me not to get in this guy's car. You know, while the stranger danger training I was raised on kicked in, I am almost positive he was just trying to do the right thing and things would have been cool but I didn't want to take that chance. Through my tears, I told him thank you and rode my bike the rest of the way home. My parents were proud that someone helped me and even more proud that I didn't get into a stranger's car. Story 6. I worked as a chef in a very nice restaurant in Cleveland, Ohio in the mid-1980s. It was located near a very bad neighborhood, and some of our dishwashers lived in that neighborhood. I was a young white kid from the suburbs, and one of the dishwashers was a black man in his late thirties named Harold, who went by Hurl. No idea why. Anyway, Hurl and I became friends. He was a rather jovial guy and was interested in cooking, so I taught him a few things, and eventually got him promoted from dishwasher to cook. He was actually quite good and loved his new job, and me for helping him out. One day, he asked me if I wanted to go out and party with him after work. Being young and adventurous, I took him up on his offer, and into the neighborhood we went. 
For those of you familiar with Cleveland, it was the Huff Avenue neighborhood. We eventually ended up in an after-hours club, which is where all the drunk people ended up when the bars all closed. I was wandering around a smoke-filled room with lots of very seedy-looking people, and I was quite drunk at the time. I ended up in a corner somewhere, surrounded by a small gang of people wondering who I was. They started closing in on me, and one of them asked me if I had a dollar I could give him. I felt my skin get clammy and realized I was about to get jacked by some drunk guys in a bad neighborhood. Suddenly, Hurl shows up, looks at the guy asking me for a dollar, and says, He's with me. Hurl has a look on his face I've never seen before. A lot more menacing than anyone in the gang surrounding me. The gang immediately changes their tune, and suddenly, I'm their friend. And one of them asks me if I would like a beer, and offers me the one he's been drinking. I respectfully decline, and Hurl and I move away. Hurl looks at me, still with that menacing look, and says, Anyone comes up to you in this hood, you tell them you with Hurl. They know me, and they know I don't play. Good to know. Ooh, man. That could have ended so badly. I'm so grateful this ended up the way it did. Hurl seems like a real stand-up dude. I'm glad he was able to show this guy a good time and was able to protect him. Story 7. Same guy actually saved my butt three times in high school. First time? Ninth grade, some big bully type, like no friends, everyone hates type bully, starts getting in my face and pushes me or something, so I, being puny and weak, go for laughs and pretend to push him, but really just push myself back. He's not having it. And right as he's starting to get in my face, this big Mexican guy and his two big friends get between us and say to the kid, why don't you pick on someone your own size? The big guy squeamishly says, nah, it's cool, and backs away. 10th grade. We were playing football in the gym, and we were playing touch, not tackle, and we agreed on this. Some kid a little bigger than me, but smaller than everyone else, tackles me to the ground as soon as I catch the ball. I don't really think anything of it until the gym was over, and before we left the field, this big Mexican angel came up to the guy who tackled me, put the football in his hand, and said, run forward. The guy is kind of confused. Run forward. So he runs forward, my angel picks him up and throws him on the ground and says something along the lines of, play by the rules or something. Tenth grade again. This guy is getting into an argument with some other guy, and the other guy says something like, go eat a Twinkie. Big guy gets super mad and starts saying all kinds of angry stuff. He calms down eventually and they go away, but the other guy's locker is right next to mine. I tried offering some friendly advice like, dude, Probably not a good idea to say that to a guy twice your size. The dude flips out and starts talking to me like he's going to kick my butt. And of course, big Mexican guy comes out from the corner, pushes the guy into a locker, tells him to get dressed, and leave. And he does. Oh, he had a hot girlfriend, too. Thanks, Steve. You were a beast. Story 8. I was doing a show at this wretched comedy club in Brockton, Massachusetts. There was a drunk chick who would not stop talking. So after a few polite back and forths, I said something along the lines of, Will someone stick a dong in her mouth and shut her up? Note, this is an old lame thing to say, but it usually works. And like I said, it was Brockton. This does the trick and she's quiet the rest of the show. I finish my set and come off stage. I'm walking out to the front room of the club and I'm suddenly aware of an enormous shape coming towards me. It's the hosebag's boyfriend. He's got like eight inches and a hundred pounds on me, and he's ticked. He shoves me into the front room and is doing the whole pre-fight. Why are you talking about my girl that way, chest bump kind of thing? When suddenly, three dudes just kind of sweep into the room. They're all built like fire plugs and wearing matching skin-tight Adidas workout shirts like some kind of working-class superhero team. One of them closes the doors to the showroom and blocks them. Another goes and stands by the front door like he's standing guard or something, while the third gets between me and the big dude, who says, What the frick, man? You want to fight? And the guy says in the calmest, coldest voice, Yes, I do. Let's fight. Something in the way he says it totally takes the steam out of the big dude. He just backs right down like, No, man. It's cool. We're all cool here. And then my mean little savior goes, This guy was hilarious. 
your girlfriend's a runt, and you owe him an apology and a beer. And the big guy nods and goes and gets me a beer before going back into the show with his tail between his legs. Turns out these guys were off-duty Brockton Vice Cops. Totally saved my stupid butt. If you go to a comedy club, you better expect to get clowned on by the comedian. Especially if you're in the front row. You are fair game. I don't get why people go to comedy clubs and then get offended. A lot of humor is going to offend a lot of people. If you don't like what they're saying, walk out. Hang out in the front room for a while. There's probably another comedian coming up. Story 9. When I was in 8th grade, I was kind of an odd kid, so some people naturally made notice and took advantage of the situation by treating me like garbage in the most bizarre manners. One day I'm walking down the hall when I made quick eye contact with this guy who sort of knew me and didn't think too highly of me. So he walks over, grabs me by the shoulders, holds me against the wall, and starts deliberately saying things like, Penis. Queeps. S. I guess he thought I was terrified of S or something. After a couple seconds of just waiting to get punched in the face, I hear a kind of roar, and the guy is gone in a gray flash. I look to my right, and he's being held back by this special guy who I would talk to, mainly because I could understand his speech, even though he had a severe impediment, but also because he would listen on occasion, and he's holding the kid back and making almost a barking sound. The guy flips out. What else would you do if you're being held down by a guy barking at you and runs off? I thank the guy. I feel bad because I can't fully remember his name, but I'm pretty sure it was something like Ed. And he just shrugs it off and says, Hey, you're my friend. And that guy was yelling at you. He never got in trouble from this, from what I saw, because he was special. And honestly, how would you report that? I was just holding this guy against the wall, making crude terms in his face when I got tackled. Too long didn't read? Awesome special guy tackles a kid who felt the need to hold me against the locker and spout out spicy terms. Dang glad I spoke to him. Story 10. This is a friend's story, but I was there and saw it take place. This took place in the late 80s. This girl, a super pretty black girl who had worked her way out of the ghetto and into the middle class, was walking home from work one day, a mile from her home. A car pulled up with two gang girls. They proceeded to rob this girl of everything she had and left her naked alongside the road. Literally. Naked. Nobody will help her. She is supremely embarrassed. Finally, some guy gives her a jacket and she calls the cops. They show up, treat her like dirt, but give her a ride home. She gets home to find her home has been robbed, stripped clean by the two girls who had her address from her driver's license and her house keys from her purse. TV, gone. Clothes, gone. Even her kitchen stuff, gone. The cops leave, making a crack about how she was probably robbed by somebody she knew. They weren't going to do a thing. My friend is hysterical, crying. She thinks of all the people she knew who could help her in some way. Someone who could make the cops pay attention. Someone who could get her stuff back. She calls Jim Brown. That's right, legendary pro football player, Hollywood actor, black icon, and all-around bad-butt butt-kicker. She tells him the story. He says he will take care of it. She asks what he's going to do, but he just tells her not to worry. A few hours later, a truck pulls up to her home. A few guys get out, open the door, and unload everything that was stolen from her. Everything. Jim Brown. One bad mother. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 11. I was working in a specialty running shoe vitamin store, and this guy came in and walked around for a while, kind of looking at different things, and said he didn't need any help when I asked him. About 15 minutes later, when the store clears out, he comes up to the front counter and pulls out a fairly large knife and demands the money out of the cash register. Being 17 at the time and feeling half panic and half anger, I started to talk loudly. All right, I will give you the money. Don't hurt me hoping that the cashier at the store next to mine would hear and call the police. The walls were thin, and we'd mess with each other as such. My dad's friend is a cop in my town, and every so often will randomly show up at work to mess with me. Sometimes this comes in the form of pretending to do a SWAT raid through the back door, which was directly behind the register. I don't usually lock the door while I'm working, 
as my boss usually stopped by two or three times to just walk in and check something and leaves. This time, my dad's friend just strolls in yelling something about terrible service and what a bad employee I am. Sees this guy with a knife out and pulls his service weapon. Guy drops a knife and gets arrested. <laughs> One day, I'm incredibly happy that my dad's friend comes in to mess with me. Too long didn't read? Cop messing with me saves me from getting robbed. Story 12. It's weird that someone would ask this. The one and only time I felt my life was in immediate danger was solved by just this situation. I was on a train platform somewhere in New Jersey and the station was empty apart from myself. After being there for a while, I noticed that a group of three, probably mid-twenties men, came up to the stairs to the right of me. I was standing holding two bags of luggage and my purse, but for the most part didn't feel concerned. That was until the group made their way to where I was standing on the platform. Two men planting themselves dead behind me and one to the front. We all stood in dead silence with me just whipping my head behind me and back to the front to make sure this was actually happening. Just picture that. An entirely deserted platform and they just happened to stand in a fairly close straight line near me? Heck no. Right as I felt tensions rising and started to contemplate the fight or flight idea I've heard about, a group of teens, laughing and being loud, came bounding up the platform stairs. The men immediately moved away from me and back into the station waiting area. It was all over in about 30 seconds. I truly believe if those kids hadn't come up the stairs when they did, I would have been robbed, or worse. Too long didn't read? A group of teens potentially saved me from assault just by being teens. This is one of the first stories where I don't think the people who solved the problem were unaware that they solved the problem. They just happened to be there as witnesses or potential witnesses to what could have possibly happened. This was just pure luck. I hope this person found a populated place to be able to get a little safer. Story 13. This is my dad's story, but thought online would like it if you guys believe me. My dad worked at an upscale hotel most of his life. Because of this, he has many stories about celebrities. Some good, some bad. But one of my favorite stories he tells is when he was a bellman. He gets off the elevator and is helping a guest with their luggage into a room when he smells smoke. Turns out, this was mid-80s, someone left a lit cigarette in an ashtray. The housekeeper came by and threw the ashtray contents into the garbage on her cart in the hall, the cigarette smoldered and caught the trash on fire. My dad sees the fire in the cart down the hall and runs to the nearest fire extinguisher. He barely notices the other man in the hall running to grab a fire extinguisher at the other end. They meet in the middle and put out the fire. When the fire's out, my dad looks up and sees that the man is Kurt Russell. My dad says, thanks. Russell says, no problem. He then sets down the fire extinguisher and walks away. My thought every time I hear him tell the story, I wonder if Kurt Russell told that story when he auditioned for Backdraft. Story 14. I was a stranger once in Toronto at the young subway stop. A mother and her two young kids standing fairly far back from the edge. Train coming in pretty fast. When the one kid bolts straight for the tracks like an idiot, my back turned but I hear mom scream. I turn around and see the kid out of the corner of my eye. On instinct, I grab for him and happen to get him right by the front of the shirt and hoist him about five feet off the ground in half a second just as the train flies by with the horn blaring. It was pure luck, but I played it cool and handed him over to his mother trying to sound suave. Is this yours? Raised eyebrow. Funny thing, she didn't even seem that grateful. Maybe the kid is prophesized to end the world or something, in which case I'd like to apologize to you all in advance. I didn't know. Story 15. When I was about 14, it was summer and we lived by the sea. My dad had a dinghy in the loft from the 70s, along with paddles. And me and a guy called Peter H. took it out to the beach. Minus paddles. Bad idea. We went with Peter's brother and we were carefree messing about in the dinghy when we realized we were drifting out to sea. We got out, started paddling and trying to swim back and couldn't touch the bottom. We kept trying in vain, and in the end realized we were fricked. This was the northeast coast of England, in the North Sea. Temperature was about 4 degrees. We shouted to his brother on the beach, now about 150 meters away, to get help. 
Unbelievably, some guy walking on the beach stripped down to his pants and swam out, dropped everything and swam out. He came to us, grabbed the boat we were clinging to, and swam us back to shore. We got dry next to some fishing boats and lent him a towel before saying thanks. I genuinely believe he got us out of a lot of trouble, and I never even got to find out his name. Story 16. My dog hated going anywhere near my garage, let alone inside it. He was a big baby about loud noises, and I think the occasional sound of power tools scared him. I was changing my brakes one day, and because I'm a moron, wasn't using jack stands. My Jeep was just up on a hydraulic jack. All of a sudden, my dog starts biting. After five or six of these seemingly playful bites, I got fed up. The oddity of him even being in this state, I was fed up. I put my socket down, pulled myself in the garage from underneath the wheel. I went to stand up. I was going to put my dog inside the house to keep him from bothering me. Within a second of me standing up, the jack broke. Not sure how much a Cherokee sport weighs, but the noise it made crashing onto the floor was like a bomb. With a tire off, the bare wheel would have landed six inches above my knees. I know it was a coincidence, but I still wonder why he did that. He passed away three days ago at the ripe old age of ten and a half. Story 17 I was at Pismo Beach in California, about 13 years old at the time, boogie boarding and not really paying attention to the fact that the current had been pushing me closer and closer to the pier. I guess I figured when I started getting too close, I would just easily swim away and that would be that. When I finally realized I was going to be slammed into the muscle and fishing hook encrusted pillars soon if I didn't start moving away, I began to swim in the opposite direction. This is when I realized that swimming against the current is much harder than swimming with it. I started paddling furiously and then began panicking because I wasn't making any progress. With each wave, I was being pushed closer to the pier. It would be just a couple more cycles before I started bouncing around underneath the pier. That's when I noticed a man standing in the water next to me. It was about waist deep. Feeling like an idiot, I slid off my board, stood up, and walked to shore. Oh, and here we have another one where the person who saved the day didn't even realize they were involved. That's kind of funny, actually. It sounds like those tropes that we all see in cartoons of someone fighting the current and then realizing it's not that deep. Did the guy just standing there even notice the kid at all? And if he did, why didn't he speak up? Story 18. I was riding a bus in Brooklyn. I was trying some new bus routes instead of the subway because they could often be faster. It was going into a very rough part of Brooklyn, basically eastern Bedford-Stuyvesant. I was going to go where the bus crossed the subway line. I'm the only white guy on a bus full of black people, which in itself was not unusual. An old guy sitting on the bus walked over to me and says, You need to get off the bus now. You can't go further. It's not going to end well for you. I don't know if he saw something specific or was speaking in general. He was sincere. I got off the bus and walked a few blocks to catch a transfer from there. Story 19 while studying abroad in Italy, I was out at a bar and this awful man kept bothering me, saying stuff like, You want to touch my penis? And trying to pull me into the back room, saying, Come with me and your night will get much better. I finally got away and went to the bar counter and got a drink with two much nicer locals. The creepy guy came back for a minute and hangs around, but then wanders off to lurk nearby. I think the situation is pretty much over until one of the guys points to my drink and there's a small pill sitting at the bottom, dissolving. The two men then rise, walk over to the creeper, and tackle him to the ground. Turns out one guy was a paratrooper and the other was a cop. Too long didn't read? Two men saved me from quite possibly being violated. Story 20. This one is my dad's. He was on a residential road when smoke started bellowing. He had jumped from the bonnet. He stopped the car, jumped out, but there was nothing he could do with the engine. Popped the bonnet and flames engulfed the entire engine bay. He just got his new Lotus Esprit 1970s and was driving it around. No mobile phones. No way to call for a fire. Then out of nowhere, some guy runs up, puts his jacket on the burning engine and puts out the flames. My dad's still in shock that his very new, very expensive car just caught on fire. He checks the damage for a bit, turns around to thank the guy, but he's gone. That's a true baller right there. 
Story 21. I was drinking with a friend and his younger brother. My friend had recently finished his enlistment from the Marines, and we were out celebrating. His younger brother ended up having words with a gangster white rapper wannabe. It escalated into, let's take it outside. We go out in the parking lot. More words and chest puffing. Mini M&M pulls out a gun and points it at my friend's younger brother. I'm like, hell, and my butthole tightens up. However, my friend walks up to the guy, slaps him in the face, and says, Put the gun away, you dumb butt, and go home. Guy puts the gun up and leaves. Marine or not, that's a dangerous thing to do. Brave, but dangerous. It's fortunate for everybody that no triggers were pulled. If that had happened, everyone's lives would have changed at that point. Not the way anyone would want them to go, but they would have changed. Story 22 car wreck on my way to school a few years ago. My little Honda Civic versus large semi-truck. I blacked out for a short period. When I realized what happened, I couldn't get my car door open. The window on my side was slightly open from the crash and I started panicking thinking the car was going to explode or something. Random stranger next to the car goes, calm down, try the other door. So I climbed over the center console and got out of the car. Story 23. My family and I were the only ones on a deserted beach in Florida. I, being stupid and about 11, decided to swim a little far from the beach and got caught by an undertow. I remember the desperate, futile feeling of swimming harder towards land but seeing it get farther and farther away. Since only my family was there and my parents aren't good at swimming, I was a goner. Out of nowhere came a strong swimmer, told me to calm down, gave me a flotation device, and swam me back to the beach. Before I could properly thank him, he disappeared. Story 24. How about a non-human stranger? I was about eight or nine walking home from school. About a block from my house, some random pit bull runs up to me and starts growling. Scared the hell out of me. I figured I was at death's door when out of nowhere another dog came to my aid. I believe it was a German shepherd. The dog ran to my side and started barking at the pit bull until it left. I didn't know this dog, and I don't believe I ever saw him again. It was a pretty surreal situation. Story 25. My laptop was stolen by a dope head. My local dope dealer was so ticked off about it, he went and beat the guy's head in with a pipe. He's one year into a three-year sentence. Thanks to him, I lost my source of dope and had to get clean. Saved my life, he did. The guy who stole it ended up getting five years for pulling a shotgun out at a tattoo parlor near my place. Story 26. When I was four, I was sitting alone in the back seat of my mom's car and decided to crawl up to the front while she paid for gas. In doing so, I grabbed the stick shift, accidentally pulling it into neutral. The car starts rolling backwards and I freeze up. Then, a random guy runs over, opens the driver door and jumps in the car to stop it. He walks me inside, takes me to my mom, and then buys me a huge Snickers. I wish I knew him now. Story 27. My friend and I were working on landscaping. He was using a motorized lift on the back of a large truck and, unbeknownst to me, had wedged his hand into the lift and he could not turn the lift on the back of the truck off, essentially slowly watching himself having to lose his fingers in the lift gate. I walked over absent-mindedly turned it off and saved his hand at the last second, not even realizing something was wrong. Story 28. I got cornered for a beating in a new high school surrounded by about 20 kids. This one kid who I met a day earlier casually walked along a fence rail through the crowd and swiftly kicked the lead kid in the face. End of story. Saved me from a beating. He was like James Dean. Never got to thank him. Story 29. A guy who was harassing me in a bar got ejected. I learned he waited outside to attack me. Another patron apparently witnessed what went on in the bar, saw the guy laying for me, and sucker punched him. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.